What are the top three digital handheld transceivers, digital radios in amateur radio today in 2022? Check this out. CQ photo, CQ photo, CQ parts on the air. You get Charlie 5, Hotel Wind Bravo. This video is sponsored by Mezzi and Palomi Coax. Mezzi and Palomi, or M&P Coax out of Italy, makes some of the best coax and best feed line available to the amateur radio community today from their smallest size around five millimeters to their largest size around 13 millimeters and beyond they offer something for everyone in every activity of amateur radio direct berry coax for your home shack and high temperature coax for those types of environments is also available from their catalog their evo or evolution pl259 connectors are some of the best i have ever seen in this industry if you want some of the greatest coax and feed line made for the amateur radio community today, check out the link in the description below to save a 5% discount. And thank you, Mezzi and Plomy, for supporting this channel. Ham Radio 2.0 reviews news and how-tos of things that are new in ham radio, and it's 2022, and I wanted to do this video targeted towards the new ham radio operator. So if you've been licensed this year maybe in the last 12 to 18 months, something like that. This video is for you. What are the top three digital transceivers, handheld transceivers in the amateur radio world today? Now, generally speaking, there are three digital modes used in ham radio. There's actually five or six of them, but the top three, the most commonly used digital modes in ham radio is DMR, D-Star, and Yezu's System Fusion. At the time of this recording, the only D-Star radio made is from ICOM. The only Yezu System Fusion radio is from Yezu. There's a lot of different companies that make DMR radios, but I'm going to tell you what I think is the best one right now. Watch until the end of the video so that you can get the secret word of the day and put it in the comments. That way I know you watch to the end and I'll be sure to respond to all of those comments. Let's go. Like I normally do, I usually go in order of price. I start at the low price and I go from bottom to top. Today we're going to start at the top. We're going to go down. The most expensive and probably the newest one also at the time of this recording is the ICOM ID52. The ICOM ID52 sells for about $650 at gigaparts.com. It's a, it's a true dual band radio, 2 meters and 440, 2 meters and 70 centimeters, that does both analog and D-Star. Now, D-Star is older technology. It's the old of the three digital modes we're going to talk about today. D-Star is the oldest one, but... This one has the newest, the latest, and greatest, so it's going to sound a lot better than a D-Star radio that you might have bought five or ten years ago, something like that. D-Star is an older, older technology, and you can kind of hear that when you listen to the different modes. In fact, I did a video a while back comparing the three modes together, so you might go check that out sometime. But the ID-52 is a great radio. It's got a color screen. It's got micro USB charging capability. So if you take it out in the field and you don't want to carry around a proprietary 110 volt charger, you can plug it into a micro USB charging brick. You can plug it into your vehicle. You can charge it that way. It's the only one today we're going to talk about that has actual micro USB or any type of USB charging capability to it. Okay, it's ICOM is one of the best Japanese brands of companies in amateur radio today, and this is their top of the line HT that we've been anticipating since before COVID, and it got delayed, got delayed just because of a bunch of other stuff. But the ICOM ID52 is going to be the best HT you can get today for D Star. If you're into D Star, or you think you might be into D Star, and if price is not an issue, there are some cheaper D Star radios available out there. But if you want the latest and greatest, that's what this video is about today. It's definitely going to be the ICOM ID52. As far as Yezu System Fusion goes, Yezu's top of the line radio is their FT5D. Now, this is one of my favorite radios, and let me tell you why. This one has a little bit... It, the ID52 and the Yezu are both color screens, but this one has a little bit more color to it. Uh, the, the, the colors on the, Ye on the ICOM are a little bit more monotone and bland. Does that matter? No. Does that affect performance? No, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. This one does have a touch screen. Now, some people like the touch screen. You can touch the screen and change bands, change the frequency, change modes and whatnot. You can go into the menu by touching the screen. I find the touch screen is a little bit more cumbersome because if you have the radio on your belt, you reach down and grab it. It always beeps at you. I usually lock my screen. Very easy to do with one touch of a button on the FT5 radio. But if you're reaching down to grab it and you forget to lock the screen, you're going to change channels. You're going to go into a menu. You're going to hit some button. You're going to be like, how did I get here? And how do I get out? Might not be so easy. But 
The Yezu FT5D is their newest rate, one of their newest HTs at the time of this recording. It sells for about $460 over at Gigaparts. Gigaparts is one of the sponsors of the show, and they're the only ones today that had all these radios in stock. That's why I'm featuring Gigaparts today, but you guys go check them out. The great thing, another great thing that the Yezu has over the ICOM is the Yezu has true APRS on analog. So it will do true analog beaconing, receiving, transmitting, text messaging, and it's full featured APRS on 144.390, which is the commonly used APRS frequency in the United States and around the world as well for the two meter band. You can turn it off completely. You can set it to beacon when you want to. You can set it to do a, what's called smart beaconing. So the radio knows, uh, the radio uses the GPS, the built-in GPS to, to determine how fast you're moving. So if you're driving down a car, it's going to beacon a lot more quickly than it would if you're just walking through the woods because you're not going to be walking through the woods at 55 miles an hour. Most of us aren't anyway. Six million dollar man, but the Yezu FT5 has full featured a APRS, unlike the Icon, which has a DPRS, which I really know nothing about. I don't know anyone who uses DPRS, so I've not really reviewed it. Maybe I should take a look at doing that. But the Yezu has a full featured APRS send and receive text messaging, beaconing, read your message, location, everything. It just it does everything that an APRS radio can do. Both of these radios hold right around a thousand memory channels. Both of them are dual band, two meters and four forty. And both of them will do their respective digital modes in addition to analog. All of these radios that I'm going to talk about today will do analog in addition to the digital mode we're going to talk about today. But if Yezu System Fusion is something you like, if you've got a Pi Star hotspot or the new Open Spot 4, if you've got one of those hotspots that'll do transcoding from Yezu System Fusion to DMR, or like the Open Spot 4 will do Yezu System Fusion to DMR or D Star, then you could get the FT5D and you could use it for all modes. So it'd be an, uh, an easy radio to use and have fully featured APRS. So it's a great choice for the top of the line Digital Fusion HT in 2022. The third radio we're going to talk about today is, of course, this is probably my favorite radio, and let me explain why. This is the Anytone AT D878 UV2+. Anytone has had four or five different lines of this dual-band DMR and analog HT. Started with the 868, had an 878, 878 Plus. Now they've got the 878 UV2 Plus, okay? And with a little bit with each newer model, they get a little bit more progressive, a little bit more modern, a little bit more mainstream. This one does not have USB charging. And the Yezu doesn't have USB charging either, although you can buy an aftermarket Yezu USB-A to Yezu plug cable that will plug into a cigarette lighter adapter for USB in your vehicle or a charging brick or something like that. So while the Yezu itself doesn't have a USB port on it, they do make a cable that goes from USB-A to the Yezu charging port. So keep that in mind. This one doesn't have any type of USB charging at all. There might be a couple of cradles out there that people have modified. I haven't seen that yet, but there's no USB ports in this radio to charge the radio. Okay, so just want to make that clear. However, this is probably the best HT to ever come out of China for specifically targeted to the amateur radio market. Now, let me tell you something, okay? Here's my opinion. You can take that for what it's worth. Any tone has filled a void. They have filled a niche that the amateur radio community has been asking about for about five, six, seven years now in the DMR, in the world of DMR. Yezu, Kenwood, and ICOM have been unwilling to fill this niche, so Anytone stepped up and filled it. Yes, $315 for a Chinese radio is a little expensive, depending on what you're looking at, but the quality of radio, the quality of audio on this radio is fantastic, both transmit and receive audio. It's fully front panel programmable, so you can put your channel in, edit your channel, edit your frequency, edit your color code, your time slot, and your talk group. You can add new channels. You can add new zones. You can edit channels around inside of zones. You can add analog channels from the front uh, panel. You can do it all on the computer with the free software that, it, that you can download from bridgecom.com or wherever you end up getting the radio. But it's completely and totally 100% front panel programmable. And that's what the amateur radio community has been asking about for a long, long time inside of a DMR radio. DMR is a commercial mode, okay? D-Star and Yezu System Fusion were both made for the amateur radio community. DMR was made for the commercial community. Now, you might say, well, I only want to use stuff that's made for the amateur radio community. I hope you're not using CW Morse code, because guess what? It was never made for amateur radio. So, if you want to use System Fusion just because you like it better, or D-Star because you like it better, great. 
wonderful. There's nothing wrong with either mode, we're to any of the three modes we're talking about today. But don't say that you don't want to use DMR because it's for commercial users, because so is Morse code. Moving along, AnyTone came in and did what the big three in Japan were unwilling to do, and they made a dual-band DMR radio that is full-featured, full APRS transmit and receive, full beaconing, full text messaging with the latest ver uh, version of firmware that this radio has. This is one of the first radios to ever come out of China with true APRS analog send and receive. It's a fantastic radio. It has it holds over 4,000 channels where the, the ICOM and the Yezu we talked about today were right around the 1,000 channel mark. This one holds 4,000 channels, and a lot of times that's because of all the different talk groups that are available on each repeater or on each hotspot. So people want a higher level of or higher capacity of channels for a DMR radio. That's just the differences in the modes. This one has full Bluetooth. In fact, all three of the radios we have today, one thing I didn't say in the beginning, all three of the radios that we talked about today have full Bluetooth, full Bluetooth capability. You can use it with the headset. You can Bluetooth it to your car stereo. So it's a good feature. This PTT button here that's that's pictured with this radio, it has a Velcro wrist strap on it that you can put around your finger or your thumb or put around your steering wheel. You can push it if you've got it Bluetooth to your car stereo. But the Anytone 878 is definitely by far the best radio for DMR in the amateur radio market today. You will not go wrong. It's got a very loud speaker. It's been compared. The battery life and the speaker, uh, the, the receive audio speaker, have been compared to the ICOM and Yezu radios. And guess what? I think the AnyTone is just a little bit better. But it doesn't do DMR, uh, it doesn't do D-Star, and it doesn't do System Fusion. So it really depends on which mode you're talking about. Something I get asked quite often is, well, which mode should I use? Should I use D-Star, DMR, or System Fusion? And my answer is always the same. You should use whichever mode is closest to you. Look up the repeaters in your area. You know, talk to the ham radio operators at different various clubs in your area and see what most of them are using, and then use what they're using. That's my answer to you. If you're saying, well, I only use a hotspot. Okay, well, then use anything you want to, because the hotspots will do them all. Doesn't matter. Pick one, whichever one you want. The AnyTone is going to be the cheaper of the three we talk about today. I know I said we were going to talk about three radios today, but I'm going to give a fourth one as an honorable mention. Okay, so put your comments below. The word of the day is the R Finder Android B1 Plus, which is the latest version of R Finder, is a fully functional Android smartphone with a built in two way radio that will do dual band analog and dual band DMR. In addition to that, it has a radio over IP feature that will allow it to connect directly to the Brandmeister network. And now at the time of this recording, they just implemented the TGIF network. So you don't even need a hotspot. All you need is a is an internet connection through the 4G on the phone or the Wi-Fi on the phone. It connects directly to the DMR network and you can talk directly into the network from the device without any additional hardware like a Open Spot or Pi Star or something like that. R Finder is not exactly a radio. It's a radio built into a smartphone. So it carries a higher price tag, around $1,200 at the time of this recording for the B1 Plus. But think of it as a smartphone. If you were to go into the AT&T or Verizon store and say, I want a brand new phone with no contract, ask them what they're selling you a brand new iPhone or a brand new Samsung Galaxy phone for if you want no contract at all. There's no bloatware on this phone. There's no proprietary Verizon uh, software you can uh, software apps you can't uninstall. It's a truly open interface, and it's a world phone. It takes two t two SIM cards, two SIM slots, and you can add it to networks all over the planet: Europe, Asia, United States, South America, North America, everywhere. So it's a it's a step above just a standard HT radio. It does DMR dual band, analog dual band, and through a use of the radio over IP technology, it does uh, direct connect. You can also put like uh, D-Star Peanut and a couple other apps like that on it, DV Switch and connect to All-Star and do stuff like that. And they're, they're making constant updates to it, constant updates. So it's a very good radio for someone in that type of market, but it's not an HT radio. It's actually much more than that. So just be aware of that when you go read about it, look at the price tag and determine whether it's something that you would actually use or not before you go spend that much money. Guys, those are the top three, four, if you will, HTs in the market today in 2022 the top three digital dmr d star and yezu system fusion hts put a comment below let me know what you think about these and remember the word honorable mention in your comments 73